Hey, what's up guys? Snowman here. Today I'll be doing a video I promised a couple of months ago and just never got around to. Um, I haven't been doing any live streams recently just because I've been busy doing other things. Um, so I figured I'd go ahead and do this video now and then jump back into the live streams. Maybe this weekend, maybe, maybe not until next week. Just depends on how uh, things go with my schedule. Today I'm going to be doing a mock unboxing and a review of the Xbox One Elite wireless controller. Um, this this controller has actually been out since October um, and, today, and it is now a, April of the following year. Um, so October, November, December, January, February, March, six months. Uh, the controller today is six months and a day old. So I figure it's pretty good time, just because you can tell how the controller is actually reacting. Um, uh, just you know, is it wearing out? Is it holding up or not? Um, and how does it look? I I actually kept the box. Here it is. And let's see. I'll show you the side. Why not? It's part of the box. And then there's all the supposed features that come with the controller. And what else? There's this side here, which is what is included in the package. Um and I'll go ahead and open this thing up for y'all. Like I said, um, this isn't new. I've had it for six months, but I know people like seeing unboxings. And, you know, the only thing difference between this and a regular unboxing is the tape's been cut and it's used. It's not new. Oh, well. Um, let me go ahead and just pop the top off. Empty box. That's the top. And this is the original presentation. It's got a little hole for the zipper, um, which I thought was kind of neat when I opened it up the first time. Go ahead and pull that out. And I'll come back to this later. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and open this up. I'm gonna go ahead and try not to drop the thing. Um, this is a nice sturdy case. Um, hard rubber material it's held up great for me um, I'm not rough on it but um, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't hold up for anybody else and there it is this is how it comes in the package originally um, it's got the facet d-pad uh, the regular d-pads here for the spare it's got the standard sticks um, and it's got dome sticks, and then the long sticks, and it's got uh, no color button buttons, the adjustable um, input. When you map the buttons, you get to change what you want, uh, which you can make changes on the fly really quick. Um, let's go ahead and I've got this foam piece in here, which I don't know this is this is a little bit of wasted money uh, in my opinion because you don't really need it but up oh, gotta show you the pouch it's got uh, this little mesh pouch up here um, I normally store the cable that comes with it in there I'll get to that in a little bit um, and then there's a spot for the uh, paddles um, these sticks each have a place, and then the D-pad will just sit right there. Um, but here it is. Um, it's got the right now. I've got the full trigger throw on it. Um, and I've got all the paddles on the back. Normally, what I do is I just play with these two. 
I set this one to A and this one to B because um, most of the time I play Halo 5. Uh, this is a good thruster, this is jump, and these are normally off. Let me show you all how to actually take these off. And I just showed you all the thing real fast. You just push and pull it away. You want to put it back on, you just fit it into the groove. This is really hard to do backwards. Um, okay, fit it into the groove right there, and then it's magnetized, it'll snap right back on. And look, I don't even have it in the groove right now. It's magnetized to the back of the controller. Um, so they're pretty significant magnets. They're worth worth it. Um, as you can take them all four off. Um, you can figure them almost any way you want. You can sit, if you like both of the long ones, you can take one long one here, one long one there. You know, do what you want with it. This to me is very awkward. Um, but, you know, it's up to you. You get to play whichever way you want to play. Uh, don't let anybody tell you differently. Um, I'll go ahead and take those off for now. Um, let's go ahead and swap out the D-pad. Um, it's super easy to switch out. You just pick it off, and it'll... Whenever, oops. <laughs> Stainless steel components are really helpful. Um, whenever you want to put it back on, you just get it close enough and it'll snap back in. Hold up. I get that by the mic. So, works pretty good. Um, this facet D pad is supposed to be good for fighters. Um, and I can see why. Um, when you're trying to get a combo, it's easier to roll around than to sit there and pick up and uh, certain directions as um, you can just go in a circle or I don't know exactly how the combos work not a fighter uh, genre player um, but I could see how that would be easier for people um, as you can tell this up here is stainless steel um, as well as the the bumpers and the triggers both stainless steel we've got this button right here one it's uh, normally the bind button um, but on this controller if you hit it twice uh, it'll actually turn the paddles off it'll vibrate to tell you they're off and then so uh, when you sit it down on a bed or something you can uh, just turn them off say hey I don't want to accidentally hit a button and back out of something. Just click it twice and it'll turn them off. And when you're ready to play again, hit them twice. It'll do one long buzz and they're back on. Um, go ahead and show the hair triggers. These little switches, you can just hit them real fast. Um, they're not hard. You can actually probably do them in game if you're talented enough. But here's the full trigger pull. And then this one got the this one has the hair trigger on this one doesn't and you can see just the difference in how far it has to go down and when it makes it all the way to the bottom uh, all it is is a mechanical stop in the controller that uh, uh, basically tricks the controller into thinking you've pressed the full throw um, when you haven't um, I normally leave both of them on just because it's easier. I normally play first person shooters and it's easier to hit it. Um, I like feeling the the actual stop that's in here as opposed to a regular controller um, which is the full throw. Um, and like I said I've shown you all the switch profile one and two. And now here's time. We're gonna move on to the swappable components. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put a dome stick on here. I'll do the other one in a second. 
all you've got to do for these is just, you know, pull the thumbstick just straight off. Or you can go off at an angle. I mean, it doesn't matter. It comes back off. The controller returns to center almost, you know, almost instantly. And it's that's another cool thing about these controllers as opposed to the the standard ones. This is actually stainless steel as opposed to plastic uh, on the regular controllers. Let me switch out. Go ahead, hit here so you can hear it. I mean, it's held on by magnets. Um, I don't like the dome ones as much as I like the regular, but you can see just the height difference between the dome. I'm trying to hold this straight. Um, between the dome and the regular one. This is the standard. Um, now let me swap out a tall stick. Both of the both sticks are swappable. I'm just doing this to demonstrate the height. See the difference in the height? Then you can use this for first person shooters. Um, some people use it in a uh, racing game like Forza. Um, I typically like the regular stick for Forza for whatever reason. Maybe it's just I'm not used to playing with a tall stick. Um, but there's the height difference. Let me. And there's a difference between the domed and the tall stick. Um, big difference. Um, what else does this thing have to offer? I'm going to go ahead and put the stick back on. I'm going to go ahead and swap out that D-pad. I like the regular D-pad better. One thing I haven't mentioned, I just noticed, um, I knew I was supposed to mention it, I just forgot. If you look here, it's got the rubber grips, which is different than, where did it go? The standard Xbox One controller. This is the one I had for about a year until the, uh, until the Elite came out. You look at the back of it, it's, you know, just plain, broke, plain plastic. Um, the overall, I don't know if y'all can tell the difference between these, but here's hoping you can. You see how this one looks just slightly different? It's because um, this is plastic, just plastic components. This is a little bit of a rubberized plastic, so it it's supposed to be more durable. Not sure if it is or not. Um, but I don't know. There's a difference. I like the color buttons, but you know, that's something I'm not too picky about. Um, let's that down. We're gonna go back into the box wherever I left it. Okay. If you notice, there is a little indention here. You're supposed to pull out. And then you find a lot more stuff. A little secret compartment for you. You've got your manual or quick, quick guide, quick setup guide. And then um, the accessories app wasn't out when I bought this, so they gave me a code or a code to get to it. Um, product manual. Go ahead and stick those back in here. And we've got this piece that comes out. And it actually held the batteries when I first got it, as well as. Oh, yeah, this was the battery side. You can see where they fit. Um, go ahead and pull this out. There we go. And put that back up. Okay. 
here is the cord that comes with it. It's a nice braided cord. Um, it's nine foot long. So. Oh, I'm about six two, six three. Um, so that'd be about my my arm length, and you can still see there's more hanging down here. So most this will handle you almost anything you need. So it's really long cord. Um, it's really nice quality cord. Um, gotta roll it up. Get this all settled. perfectly in there uh, and then if you need it you got it okay now I'm gonna go ahead and you know, just give y'all a quick uh, quick review whether you know is it worth it um, is it worth $150 uh, you know, that's a hard question to answer. Obviously, people do think it's worth $150 because they had problems keeping it in stock until, I think, February? Um, I mean, it's $150. I got mine day one, got it with Halo 5. Actually went to Best Buy at nine in the morning to pick this up and had Halo 5 delivered later that afternoon uh, from Amazon. Um, I I had a bunch of gift cards and discount cards. I think I ended up paying 112. No, uh, without tax or anything. Um, so I got a pretty good discount on it, and I like it. I think it is worth um, what I paid for it. If you're a good player, it'll turn you into a better player. If you're already great, you know I don't know if this will make that much of a difference for you. Um, cause you're probably already using a scuff and I don't know how those, com the, this compares to a scuff. I've heard better, um, but I'm not sure exactly. Um, all I know is I like it. I think it is really helpful when I play, um, just to have the extra control in the longer sticks with snipers and stuff. Uh, to that extent but you know price one thing I didn't mention during the the uh, demonstration is it has this three and a half millimeter jack right there and you can listen to uh, game audio and use a standard headset to talk to you know people on Xbox Live or your friends at a party um, that's one of the reasons I got it, um, as opposed to this one, that I just didn't have it. It didn't come with it. It wasn't standard at that point. It is now standard on all controllers. Um, but, let me see. Making sure I got everything. One thing for $150 I think it needed to have was a rechargeable battery pack that came with it. I've already got my play and charge kit from uh, Xbox. I've got their cable um, to charge because the cable that comes with this controller does not charge a rechargeable battery pack that's from Xbox. Um, I don't know why it doesn't charge it. Maybe there's some wire missing that uh, carries just the electrical current that goes into the battery as opposed to just taking the data and going back and forth. Um, these controllers can be used, the cable that comes with it, it can be used on PC or the Xbox One. I play, um, I play wirelessly most of the time. Sometimes I do play with the, with the wire. Does it help or not? I don't notice that much of a difference. 
when, I, when I'm not playing great, I blame it on, oh, I'm playing wirelessly. And really, it's not. That's probably not it. I'm just having a bad day. It, it happens. Um, one thing that I'm not happy with with this controller um, is that I've actually put a ding in it. Can you see that? Right there. And I don't know how that happened. I don't know why it happened. Um, I think this thing is supposed to be stainless steel. Um, I wish there was some kind of scratchless steel because that just sits there and bugs me any time I look at it. Because I'm like, oh, I paid a hundred and something for this controller, and I've already got a dent in it. Um, it's disappointing. Um, Not going to give this a necessarily a number score, but y'all can see, you know, it's got its good points. It's got its not so great points. Um, it's really up to you whether you want to spend 150 or, you know, if you get it on set or get lucky and find it at Black Friday or something for less. It's up to you what you want to spend on it. Um, If you have a custom-made controller, they can go to easily two hundred, three hundred dollars. That's why I don't think this is that that terrible of an investment. Um, helps you play a little bit better. Um, you know, it all comes down to you and how well you play, and how you adjust to making the switch from you know the standard controller to this controller with the trigger with the triggers, locks, the paddles, and the thumbsticks. What I would recommend to anybody who gets one of these, um, as far as starting out playing, don't go online first because you're gonna um, be getting used to the controller. You're not gonna play well. You're gonna play horribly at first. Don't be frustrated. Um, you know, it, it'll happen. Um, what I did, like I said, got this the day Halo 5 came out. Um, I put all of my paddles on. And then I said, I'm going to play the campaign because Halo campaigns are awesome. And I was a little let down by this one, but that's a video for another time. I put all the paddles on. I hit the trigger locks. And I put the two tall sticks on and I just played the game. Um, and I just learned its muscle memory. Um, Getting used to the tall sticks is muscle memory. Um, if I take the tall sticks off now, I can still play. Um, just because I was used to playing, you know, Master Chief Collection, other games uh, on the Xbox One with the standard controller, standard uh, stick size. Um, so I can go back to it. Um, am I as good as I? Am with all the extra components? No, I'm not. Um, with the extra components, it's it's a competitive edge for anybody that wants to, you know, explore, you know, a, a elite or a pro controller. Um, I'm trying to think what else. There's got to be something else this thing does. Um, Oh, every button on here, this button, this button, this button, this button, these two buttons, and all four of these are all map mappable and reprogrammable um, through an Xbox accessory app that I mentioned earlier. Um, you can swap the triggers, I think you can swap the sticks, um, change the the rumble intensity on these, which I don't... I don't think you can do on the regular controllers. I know you can map the the regular buttons, up. and I think swap the sticks and the triggers. I'm not sure exactly. I'd have to double check. Um, but you can change the sensitivity of the stick. For example, if you wanted to have this much on the stick, actually act like this much, you could adjust that. Um, you can change the triggers. I actually had to do that for Halo 5 because when I was trying to fire the plasma pistol on the campaign, I would 
sit there and try to charge it up with a hair lock down um, and it wouldn't uh, wouldn't start charging it just uh, try to quick fire and I couldn't figure out why it wasn't charging um, turns out that for the for weapons that charge up like the plasma pistol you've got to have the full throw um, so what I did in that app was went in and told it this is about about 75 percent of the whole throw um, I said hey 75 is now a hundred percent and you can do that for games like Forza um, where this is your gas pedal because um, if you played Forza with the hair trigger locks on and you hadn't adjusted anything you would make it to about I think somebody said 40 miles an hour is about the max you'd hit um, and you wouldn't go any faster until you turned off the lock and hit go and pressed it all the way down um, so you can adjust that swap all the buttons that's how you set the paddles as well there's a default set for the paddles can't remember what it is um, I you can use some uh, sets that are aut automatically added to the app um, I think Halo has a couple of presets in there for Halo 5 it's um, Halo 5 campaign multiplayer is another one and multiplayer fish stick I think I think is what it is um, don't quote me on that one I can't remember what it is off the top of my head I don't have it in front of me um, yeah so if y'all want one go y'all can go to xbox.com and look for go to their page for this and from there you can find all the suppliers uh, that carry it made all the major retailers um, that is all for me for today I hope you all enjoyed this video if y'all did be sure to like it and go ahead and subscribe to my channel um, I don't do reviews and unboxings very often but when I do um, or anytime I get anything new I will definitely do a unboxing for it um, if y'all have anything y'all want me to go in and review just let me know and I can go back and do a review if you want one for Halo 5 we'll do one for Halo 5 Master Chief Collection I'll go back and do that one um, I'll probably give it a little bit better score than <laughs> what it got when it came out just because it had so many problems at launch um, but yeah this is all for me for today hope y'all enjoyed and I will see y'all guys next time. Take care.